Gain control of cyber risk with Tenable IO, the first vulnerability management platform built for today's elastic assets like cloud, containers, and web apps. Discover a fresh, asset-based approach that prioritizes vulnerabilities while seamlessly integrating into your environment. And improve ROI with the first elastic licensing approach based on assets, not IP addresses. Tenable IO delivers the data and context you need to secure your elastic attack surface. Start your free Tenable IO trial today by visiting tenable.io. In order to deliver the maximum degree of privacy, personal data must be protected without action from an individual. In fact, this requirement is defined in the General Data Protection Regulation, also known as GDPR. What if you could reliably and efficiently build privacy into your information security programs by default? StealthBits Technologies provide solutions that allow data to be collected and used in a manner that achieves GDPR compliance. Privacy by design and by default is not just a GDPR requirement, it's the foundation of StealthBits Technologies. Technologies. Visit StealthBits.com to learn more today. Hello and welcome. In this Enterprise Security Weekly Tech segment, we're going to talk a little bit about real intelligence threat analytics, how it works, how you can get it up and running, how easy it is to get it up and running, and what you can actually get out of the tool fairly quickly. Now, the goal when Paul and I and the people at Black Hills Information Security, Brian and Lawrence and, and uh, Derek and a whole bunch of us got involved of actually trying to create real intelligence threat analytics was to create a series of tools that would be useful in detecting advanced adversaries, not necessarily going down the path of trying to do signature-based detection, such as YAR rules or uh, you know standard antivirus, but what happens whenever a bad guy starts bypassing those traditional security defenses? So when you're looking at Rita, it's a free tool that we've released publicly, and more importantly, think of it as a tactical analyst tool. It's not something that is going to automatically detect all evil on your network because anybody that purports to do that is absolute complete garbage. It doesn't actually work that way. But it's going to give you the ability to drill in very quickly and find interesting activities. So here, we can see that um, this is uh, the GitHub page for it right here. You can see github.com forward slash OCM dev forward slash Rita has all the different files that you need to get up and running. And more importantly, to get it up and running, it is very, very, very easy to get installed. So these instructions right here, you do a git clone to clone the Rita git repository. You cd into Rita, and then you make the install.sh script uh, uh, executable. You run the install.sh script, then you basically set the bash configuration start Mongo, and you're pretty much at the point where I'm at right now. Now we talk about implementing keys and doing analysis. All of that is here on this website, but I'm gonna jump right to the chase and we're gonna start doing some analysis right off the bat. So the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna make my terminal a little bit bigger, um, just so it's a little bit easier for people to see what is going on on my computer screen. Then I'm gonna set my uh, uh, PS uh, profile, I'm gonna set it um, equal to just a dollar sign at the moment, just to make it easier, sorry, PS1. We're gonna set that equal to a dollar sign and make all that extra line stuff disappear. There we go. Now it makes my terminal look nice and clean and we're ready to go. So the first thing that we're going to do is I'm gonna show you that uh, when Rita ingests data, and I can show you the commands to ingest data, it ingests bro logs. And I'm gonna circle back and we're gonna look at those bro logs here in just a little bit. And in this example, we have two backdoors that we commonly use in penetration tests. One is called DNS cat, the other one is called VS agent. Uh, DNS cat does all of its command and control over well-formed DNS queries. And then VS agent is a backdoor that beacons at very regular intervals. And it actually is clear text HTTP, but it's in a view state parameter that is uh, base64 encoded. So in short, that's kind of hard for a lot of the traditional security technologies out there to be able to successfully detect these two backdoors. And we like to use them as examples. So if I actually go through my command history here, I can actually show you the beacons in the database VS agent. So after Rita has imported your bro logs, and you do need bro to make Rita work properly, and bro is awesome. We did a blog post on that yesterday, and I'll show that to you here in just a little bit. We can do show beacons. We can give it a database VS agent, and it shows us all of the beacons and all of the information that it has in the database related to that capture of bro logs. Now, this by itself might be a little bit difficult for uh, people to try to parse. I'm going to show you how we've made this tool a lot easier for parsing an analysis here right now. We can also add in the minus capital H parameter that'll actually break down the columns and explain to you a little bit about what each of those columns actually does. 
Now, this is meant to be something that you can kick out to an Excel spreadsheet. You can actually do analysis and access if you want. Um, we have an entire front end that we're releasing here shortly in the next couple of weeks publicly uh, to everybody. But it's meant to be imported. The first one that you saw was actually comma delimited. That makes it easy for ingest. And then with the minus H, it actually shows you the human readable format. And it'll give you the column names, what they actually mean as well. So let me show you what we've done recently that I think is very, very, very cool. Um, we've also added in the ability for Rita to, uh, to basically kick out an HTML report. Just a really, really basic, um, simple Simple HTML report. If I actually do Rita, do minus H, it says you can do HTML report, which I have already done. So I'm going to fire up Firefox and I'm going to open index.html. And this is going to open up uh, Rita. So here we go. And it immediately starts up and it says, I have two databases that I'm doing analysis on. You have VS Agent, and you can see it shows you pretty much the exact same data the command line version did, except it's in an HTML format. It shows you the, the beaconing score, the source IP address, destination, the number of connections, the average byte, interval range. A lot of this stuff is math uh, stuff that we've been using quite heavily in Black Hills Information Security and in offensive countermeasures to come up with more analytics on the back end. But you can see that we have one system that has almost a perfect score for Beacon, and it's going to a weird IP address. The rest of these are IP addresses that are going to like Yahoo and Google, mainly Google, Google Chrome and updates and plugins and things like that. And uh, we actually have, uh, you can pipe all of the output, even to basically look at the HTML, you can pipe it through grep and grep out. So it's kind of like a whitelist capability that you can implement on this free version of Rita. So here I can see that we have 8,636 uh, 8, uh, different connections that are being made. That is a lot of almost a perfect beacon. We can also look at blacklisted. You can see that these are the external IP addresses that received uh, connections from internal RFC 1918 IP addresses. Let me see if I can make my font a little bigger here for you guys. But these are the internal systems that were communicating to these outbound known blacklisted IP addresses. And we also have some DNS data. And I want to show you why the DNS data itself is really important. Very, very cool stuff that you can do with the DNS data. So this one doesn't have very much interesting at all in the DNS data because this backdoor wasn't designed to use DNS data. However, if I go back to Rita and I select DNS cap, which is a backdoor that does use DNS data, and I select DNS, and I make this large again so you guys can see it effectively. You can see that um, this is called an exploded view of DNS. Um, very, very effective way of detecting backdoors that use DNS as a command and control. So here you can see that we have .com. There was 32,281 subdomains for .com, and there were 128,000 visits, roughly, and change. You would expect that. Uh, you, you have google.com, yahoo.com, msn.com, bing.com every once in a while. You have all these .coms and .nets and these Akamai edges. You would expect these subdomains to exist. But whenever you start seeing like a full domain, like nanobotninjas.com, well, that's definitely strange. So this would be a good indication that something is weird. It's not just .com, but it has 82,920 instances, and there were 30,191 subdomains associated with that. So we can actually drill in, and we can do some additional analysis on this one as an example. Let me close all of this out. Let's go back a couple directories, and I'm going to CD into the DNS cat logs that we have here. And then I'm going to CD into a date range. We actually had two separate days that were uh, that were actually captured here. I'll just do that one. And then um, I can do zgrep. Let me show you what DNS or what uh, bro logs look like. So I do ls-lrt. These are compressed bro logs. Now, we use bro for a variety of reasons. We use bro because um, its date and timing is very, very consistent. It's very, very fast. It works well. It has a good user community. And I want to be able to find all of the instances of that nanobot ninjas instance um, from these gripped files. So I can do zgrep. So I can zgrep uh, nanobot ninjas. Uh, let's just do nanobot. You just do grab, grab any string nanobot from every single file in the current directory. And it's going to pull up all of our nanobot ninjas instances. Now, if when, whenever it gets done here, you're going to see that we have over here, you can see that we have a bunch of randomly generated hosts that were being resolved. And this is how DNSCAT actually works. Every time it does a command and control, it generates a brand new 
um, host, but the domain stays the same. This forces your DNS server to constantly do recursion. Now, normally in many organizations, the idea of your systems connecting outbound to 8.8.8.8 .8 .8 .8 .8, um, is not going to be evil. For those of you that don't know, that is a uh, that's the DNS server for Google, um, and that's generally whitelisted and not an evil server. So we were bouncing our command and control off of Google, doing resolution to nanobot ninjas, and you can see all of that here. And you can find that very quickly and easily with Rita. You can also find the beaconing analysis with Rita for something like VS Agent very easily as well. Now, once again, this uh, tool is meant to be free and open source. We provided it to the community. We've been developing on it for years and uh, runs on top of Bro. And when you install Rita, if I go back to my instructions, it'll automatically install Bro for you. Uh, so it's going to set up Bro, configure it, get it running. It's going to set up Rita, get it running. It's going to get the database, get it running. So you can start doing analysis very quickly uh, using this tool. It is free, open source, and once again, it is a tactical tool. This is a tool that you would do if you think that you have an advanced adversary on your network or you want somebody to to actively go hunting. And the reason why we do this is a lot of the tools that we encounter whenever we're doing network penetration tests do a very poor job at detecting some of the basic backdoors that we use on a regular basis. So this tool is free. It's a tactical tool available for you and your uh, your, your tech staff. It is also easy to set up, just like five, what do we got? One, two, three, four, five, six commands to get it up and running. And we have a fancy little HTML output uh, that you can use as well. So please get it up and running. And uh, we also have a very active um, uh, issue tracker. So if you have any issues whatsoever, we actually have people that are constantly in here and receiving uh, any issues that you may have. And we've got a fleet of flying monkeys to get this stuff fixed for you. So thank you so much. We do hope you get a chance to check it out. And I'll see you guys in the next Enterprise Security Weekly Tech segment.